Hi people, I am Joe, your tech friend. Today we're going to learn how to create a kiosk app using Chrome App Builder. This is a very easy to use Chrome application. First of all, let's create a folder in the desktop where we will save the files. Just make up a name. Secondly, it's recommendable to synchronize your Gmail or G Suite account to your Google Chrome browser or install the Chrome App Builder application over one of those. This is not necessary though, as you can just install the application with no account sign in if you don't want to sync it to any profile. After that, go to the Chrome Web Store and let's search for the application called Chrome App Builder and let's install it this way. Once you have installed the application, you can find it opening a new tab and clicking on the apps icon at the top on the left hand side corner or just typing in the URL bar chrome colon slash slash apps and press enter. Then let's click on the app. Here, at the top area, you do not have to do anything, as this is where the content will be previewed. Then, the rest of the options are very intuitive. In the first field is where you name the application. I will call it Customer Feedback. Then, you establish the initial version. I will type 1.0, simple as that. In the home page field is where you paste the URL content you need to display. I will use a simple URL like this Google form, which contains a survey for a customer feedback as an example. But remember that you can use the website you've developed as long as it is public on the web because one of the main purpose of creating a Chrome application using Chrome App Builder is to launch a URL through kiosk mode and that environment is not authenticated with a Gmail account or a G Suite account whatsoever. As you see, the preview takes some time, but is displayed at the top. Now the next four checkboxes have to be selected if you need one of the navigation bar buttons showing at the top. If you don't need the reload button, for example, you just don't select it. The next two fields are very explanatory by themselves. The first one is to type the time in minutes the app is idle before clearing browsing data, and the second one is the time in minutes the app is idle before returning to the home page and, as it says, the browsing data won't be cleared. If you don't want surprises or some unexpected behaviors during the app usage, leave it at zero and allow the users to control getting back to the home page using the navigation buttons as that is the purpose of them. As you know, kiosk applications can be shown using the screen at 90 degrees, for example, if you will portrait that TV. 
If that is the case, you can manage how the app will be launched in the screen by changing the degrees in this field. Next, this is very important. The kiosk mode enable is automatically checked by default. You need to make sure it is checked. If it's not checked, the application will work within Chrome OS only and it won't be available to be launched as kiosk. Finally, click on the export kiosk app button and select the folder you created at the beginning on the desktop to save these application files. Now, once the files are created, there is a folder called IMG, which contains a Chrome icon image at 128 times 128 pixel size. This is the application icon image by default the Chroma Builder creates for you. Definitely, you can change this by replacing the image icon for one you have prepared previously. Just take in consideration that it has to be a 128 times 128 pixel size PNG file. Then you can replace the original image from that folder. Now you are ready to zip the files. And this is very important. Do not zip the folder you created on the desktop which contains the files you exported. You need to zip the files themselves as you see here and name the zip folder as the application name you choose. Very well. Now let's upload the application to the Chrome Web Store to get it ready to deploy from the admin console. We need to access to the Chrome Web Store, sign in with the admin account if you manage the G Suite admin console. This can be done by the way with a Gmail account if you don't have a G Suite admin console, but then you would have to pay the $5 one-time fee. Click on the gear icon at the top on the right hand side corner and click on the developer dashboard option. Please take in consideration the following announcement. As of November 21st, 2016, all newly packaged or hosted apps are restricted to Chrome OS and are not available to users on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Only existing apps will continue to be available on all major platforms and will continue to receive updates. This is self-explanatory, but in short words, this means that new apps you will work only within Chrome OS. Extensions, in the, in the other hand, will work for Chrome OS and other platforms like Windows, Mac, and Linux. Okay, once we are located in the developer dashboard, click on the Add New Item button you need to upload the zip file you just created. Once that is done, you will have access to the application developer options. As normal, you need to fill out the mandatory fields to success this process. In the icon field, you can upload the icon image you replaced in the IMG folder. A brief description is recommended, but it's not mandatory. The screenshots can be more than one but for this video, I will upload only one. However, you need to stick to the size requirements. The screenshots need to be 1280 times 800 or 640 times 400 size. Attempting to upload any other size different than these ones will definitely fail. The small tiles promotional tile image is mandatory. 
the size should be 440 times 280 exactly. The large title and marquee are not necessary, so you can just skip them. The other important selection is the category. You need to select the appropriate one and as well as the region, you will restrict some countries. For this example, I will leave it at all regions. Finally, the visibility options is mandatory. If you don't need to publish this for public access, you can select unlisted or private. Unlisted if you would like to share the app with somebody else with the link or private if you want to make it available only for people within your domain. If the app will be public, you would have to pay a one-time $5 fee. Now you can preview the app and you will see the screenshots you uploaded as well as the app name and the description you detailed previously. We need to wait around 20 minutes or 30 for the app become available and visible for your domain. I will pause the video so you can see it quickly. Now, in order to deploy this app as kiosk for your Chrome devices, please follow these instructions. Open your admin console. Go to Device Management and click on Chrome Management. Then, we need to access to Device Settings. Now, take in consideration that you need to select the organizational unit where the Chromebooks you want to deploy this app are located. Or you can apply this from the top level organizational unit if you want. Now we look for the kiosk settings section and then go to the kiosk apps policy. There click on manage kiosk applications. A frame will pop up and click the Chrome Web Store section on the left hand side. In the search engine, type the app name or the app ID. Once the app is found, add it to the right hand side and save the changes in the frame. But also click on save at the bottom of the admin console. Now, take one of the Chromebooks located in that OU and reboot it. Once in the sign in screen, back again, at the bottom on the left hand side, you will find the Apps button. There, you should find the application name with the icon you choose for it. When you click on the app, it will be launched on kiosk mode. The users won't be able to open any tab or go to any other site other than the links available in the website launched as kiosk. As you notice, the navigation buttons are at the top as we selected before. The only way to escape from kiosk mode is rebooting the device. This will make the users to focus on what they need to do and prevent them from accessing any other online distractions like Facebook or the Google search engine. This is ideal for testing purposes as the students won't cheat on the tests.
Thank you very much for watching the video. If you like to continue watching tech tips like this, please subscribe to my channel. This is Joe, your tech friend. Have a great day.